hi everyone. Um, it's too well. It's 12.01 Mountain Time, but we are going to wait just a couple minutes just to kind of let everyone get into the room, let all the attendees trickle in, and then we'll get started, okay? So we'll wait just one or two minutes. All right, I see some people are introducing themselves in the chat. That's great. Feel free to uh, put your name or maybe even your major or what you hope to learn today. That'd be awesome. Uh, someone asked if they'll be able to access the recording later. Yes, so we are recording. Um, we will share the link immediately on the Student Life LinkedIn page, which if you're not following that, let me find you the link. That's a great page to follow. And in the meantime, Celie, I'm uh, sending a WhatsApp uh, text to Michelle really quick. Just give me okay. one. Yeah, so actually on LinkedIn, we have um, a group that's called CSU Global Student Life. And so I'll post the link to that in that group. And also, um, Eventually, it'll be on CSU Global's YouTube, but that takes a few days. Okay, someone said, can we ask questions? There is a Q&A option, so you can either ask questions in the Q&A or you can type them in the chat. So because it's a webinar, you won't be able to like talk and ask questions, but you can definitely type them and either um, Dr. Lau will answer them verbally during the presentation, or I will be here answering questions in the chat and in the Q&A. We're waiting on our other host. She lives across the pond in, uh, in England, so we think maybe <laughs> there was some confusion with the time change. A faculty member, yes, you can definitely post the link in your course announcements. So if we do have any faculty members here, please, yeah, share it in uh, in your courses. We love that at the Writing Center. Like, share us. We love. We want. We want the exposure. <laughs> so please feel free. All right, well, Teresa, are you about ready to get started? Yes, 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 I am ready. Thank you all okay. for our, our webinar. We have a big group, Celie. Um, I'm, I'm so glad that the uh, 12 o'clock actually worked for a lot of students because, you know, we were wondering, you know, everyone's at work today, so you made it happen. So thank you all for being here. Um, so we prepared um, uh, uh, an insightful and informative PowerPoint because as writing consultants, um, even though we review the papers for content and um, uh, you know, organization and other details, most of the students um, are asking about APA. And one of the things that they uh, are worried or concerned with many of their papers um, are their APA, APA because they're getting docked uh, on several points on their in-text citations and their references. And so we decided what's happening. You know, we have the uh, excellent resources in the Writing Center for all your APA needs, but I guess sometimes. Um, uh, it's it's difficult to remember all these rules. So you don't need to memorize those rules. 
okay? But the most important thing is you apply this information uh, in your paper, okay? So really, we, we, we organized or created this webinar because students are frustrated with uh, the, the APA errors. Um, and now we have the seventh edition. And so you have to make sure you follow that as opposed to the sixth edition as well. Um, and then you lose points if you don't follow the APA form formatting. Okay, so this is your chance to clarify uh, any rules, um, any citation uh, problems that you may be having. There's, there's still a lot more. So hopefully we can cover everything um, within an hour. Okay, and then of course, hope you, hopefully you like the graphics as well. They're, they all, um, we all, uh, I, we use the PowerPoint Microsoft for all the graphics because I know with your presentations and your papers, you do need to cite your graphics when you use them. So you could also give credit uh, at the beginning of your PowerPoint uh, when you're submitting PowerPoint or your papers, um, and then just let let your instructor know that you did. Uh, take the information from um, the website or from the, the Power Microsoft Office. Okay, so let me make this a little bit bigger. Okay, this is one of the things that um, sometimes you probably may get some errors with your title page sometimes, you know, maybe, maybe not. Okay, so tell me, okay, um, what are the things that you usually include in your title page? So this is, this is the information here. And for some of you in the chat area, could you tell us if um, you may be adding other things that are not needed in the title page? Um, the other day, uh, I saw the complete template from a student, um, but they also included title of the paper, student name. So you could delete all that. You don't need to include title, you know, um, all that notes. So those are just a guide for you, but not necessarily um, to be included. So you can erase that and replace that with your information. So I'm just kind of wondering, and I know Celie is also monitoring our chat area, but I was wondering from those of you who are here, how many of you included the title, the title of your paper? And so it has to be in bold and then the page number on the right. And how many of you still include the running head on the left side of the paper? Okay, so the APA paper, Risa, you said it's on the left and not on the right. So as you can see it, the, as you can see here, the page number is on the right side of the document. And, and when you said I do for the rest of you, Stephanie, Anna, Chelsea, I wonder if you guys include the running head. You still include the running head? So some of you, okay. All right, so page number on the right. Okay, so yeah, no long, you no longer need the running head um, in your title page, okay? All right, so no questions about the title page. I'll move on to the next one, okay? So this one, very simple, but at the same time, I, I do still see a few errors every now and then uh, for the title page um, and the page numbering. But if, if you follow that format, then you should be okay. And um, every now and then, go to the chat area as well. Uh, Celie has posted uh, some links that you can use. Um, you can all you can find them in our CSU uh, Writing Center, um, which is uh, contains a lot of good information uh, for your APA needs. Okay, all right. Anne, yes, yes, feel free to join us, Anne. Glad to have you here. Anne is one of our writing consultant as well, Miss uh, Dr. Anne Carly. Um, she's one of our uh, writing consultants. So um, I'm glad she's here as well. And she could also uh, answer some of your questions here, okay? Um, and then Dr. Anne mentioned to use a real title. Uh, and not just the name of the assignment. So that's a good point because sometimes we'll see critical thinking assignment week two or module two. 
um, and then they don't have the title. They'll they'll say option one or option two. So that's a good that's a good suggestion as well. Um, so yes, yes, Dr. Ann, please please feel free to um, uh, chime in, answer their questions, um, and then uh, Dr. Ann is here as well. So thank you so much. Um, <laughs> Stephanie. All right. Well noted, Stephanie. All right. So yes, we are providing this uh, PowerPoint to our instructors as well. And of course, the, the, the seventh edition, if you have that and you could show the manual and the link to your instructors, then I'm sure they will look at it and maybe you know, look at the information that you've provided, okay? So let's look at the in-text citations, okay? So in-text citations, there are so many things to remember uh, when, when you are um, citing your sources in the, body, uh, in the body paragraph. So there's six things that we wanna discuss here, although there are probably more things uh, that are included in the in-text citations. So we have signal phrases, in-text citations in sentences, using quotes, web-based article, citation for an organization, and qu uh, quotes of 40 words or more, okay? So I will, um, we'll discuss them um, one at a time. And then Dr. Ann, feel free to, to say something or, um, uh, you, we could have you un, unmute the line um, as well if you would like to, to join us. That would be great, okay? All right. Okay, so let's talk about signal phrases, okay? And a lot of times, you do, I do see this maybe uh, sentences that start uh, with according to, okay? Um, I would say 99% of papers, uh, many students start their papers with according to. Okay, all right. So here, let's 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 start this one here. Um, you have three choices for the in-text citations. Okay, you want to cite a source in the text using a signal phrase. Signal phrase according to Paul and Elder, which is the correct formatting for this particular slide. If you guys could write your answers in the chat area. Okay, all right, so we have one there. Okay, and do your best. And even if you make a mistake, that's okay as well. Okay, um, and that's one way we, we can all learn is if you, you know, make a mistake and then find out what, what mistakes you made. So the others as well, um, I see we have 59 participants. So at least, you know, if we could have 15, 20 students write their answers for this one, uh, that would be great. Um, I missed that question. Um, should the title of the paper match the title in, in on, on page two of your paper? So Danielle, yes, okay. Um, Whatever your title is, so let me go back to the title page. I missed that. So if if I miss a question, um, just let me know. Um, uh, and and Celie will also let me know. Okay, or Dr. Ann will also provide the answer there. Um, but yes, the title in that on that paper should be the same title as page two, okay, the very top of your paper before you start the paper. Okay, so you do have to have the same title. Okay. Um, so everyone, mostly we have C, right? C as the answer. We have one for B and then one for A. Okay, so every now and then. Okay, all right. So the answer for this one, okay? For the first one, and I'll type the answer here. Okay, this is actually, the answer is C. Okay, C is the answer. Um, when you cite a source, okay? Um, when you cite a source, you have the author's name at the beginning. You do need to include the year of publication right after the author's names or the author's last names, okay? So even if, you know, you have the year at, at the end for consistency of information, um, for, you know, following the format, the year should be written right after the last name, okay? Um, 
Yes, yes, yes. So um, Dr. Car uh, Dr. Ann also mentioned, uh, write the real title because it does reflect on your thesis statement. So that is correct. Sometimes I'll have a title and then and then I would search on in, in, in the body of the paper and I wouldn't see a word or two that was mentioned in the title in the body of the paper. And, and, and so I, I sometimes ask the students, your title says leadership styles, but then nothing in the paper talks about lead, the words leadership styles, but you use other words, right? So you have to use the same words. Okay, so do we have questions about this one? Why is the answer a C? Okay, so the answer here is C. Okay, do we have any questions? Okay. Well, so I mentioned, I mentioned that earlier, after the last name, you do need to have the year of publication. So non so far. Thank you. Yes, yes. Feel free to respond as well. No questions. Um, uh, thank you for that information. Um, okay, so just go ahead and respond in the chat area once, once, you know, we're ready to move on. That way I know everybody's okay to move on. Okay. Okay, so let's go to the next one. What, which is the correct APA formatting for this one? So this one, I'm gonna make it smaller because you can see this. Okay, so which is the correct way to cite your source? So I'll give you some time to look at this um, and write, uh, write your answer here. Um, can you email me the Zoom? Um, so Silly, uh, one of them wants the, the link to the Zoom. So if we could just uh, maybe uh, provide the link in the chat area, that would be great. Okay, so this one here, we have different answers. We have A and B. A, B, all right, wonderful. And we don't have a C, which is good, right? I see that sometimes at the end of a sentence, uh, we will see a citation and the sent, you know, the, the the names of the authors are not part of the, um, the in-text citations. It's awkward. It's awkward to have C included there. So for the purpose, okay, so you guys did a good job um, off eliminating C in your answer, okay? This one, it has something to do with the use of ampersand and the use of the conjunction end. Very simple, but it still has, it's a matter of consistency. So we erase that one. The answer here is A, okay? The rule for this in-text citation is if the sentence is part, if the authors are, are part of the sentence, okay? So if the, if the authors are part of a sentence, if you say Paul and Elder, okay? Then you can say, then you can write the conjunction N, Paul and Elder, you have the citation stated that, okay? But if the in-text citation is inside the parentheses, okay? If it's inside the parentheses, then you have to use the ampersand symbol. Very simple, okay? Maybe you don't even get any deduction for that. But I do take note of that error when I see it in my students um, in text citation. Um, one time I'll say, you know what, if, 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 the in, if the authors are part of that, you know, it is, is, if the authors are inside the parentheses, then include, um, uh, use the ampersand symbol, okay? Um, is that word for word, Gloria? What do you mean, Gloria? Are, are, you, are you talking about uh, direct quotes? So direct quotes, are we talking about direct quotes? So if you type it word for word, if you type it word for word, okay, um, and you have direct quotes, yes. It's also the same. If let's say you add direct quotes for A, okay, all you have to do is if I add direct quotes here, clarity is one of the intellectual sta standards. Let's say that's a direct quote. It's still the same, Paul and Elder ampersand. 
And then I just have to add a page. Okay, let's say page five. Okay, or if I don't have the page number, I count the paragraph from the top, paragraph one, paragraph two, paragraph three, paragraph two. Okay, so I just write it this way. Okay, but so it doesn't change it. It doesn't change the use of the ampersand if, if, if the direct quote, okay, if the direct quote is, okay, outside. Okay, if the direct quote is outside and the in-text citation the authors are inside the parentheses, it's still the same. You have to use the ampersand symbol. Okay, all right. And then conjunction and if it's part of the sentence. Yes, yes. So Stephanie, you look for the page number first. You look for the article and see if the page number is provided. If the page number is provided, then you just add page, okay, page six, okay. If you don't see the page number, then you, you write um, para six, okay. Usually it's a small letter, para six, okay. All right, and that means it's paragraph six, okay. Um, yes, yes, yes. So Dr. Ann uh, talked about using a word, let's say you, you took that word intellectual, intellectual standards, you have to use the quotes, and then you need, uh, you need to include the page or paragraph number. Um, so for the page numbers, so double check, yes. So uh, Tracy indicated that um, her instructor told her not to use the ampersand only in the references section. So check check that link um, from the writing center um, and then just double check the information. And sometimes um, if let's say you found the information from the writing center and this is the citation format and then you're provided a different rule at the writing center and then when your instructor provides you with another way of citing your sources, then um, uh, go to the link and then show the link to the instructor and say, this is what I found, um, could you help me understand? Okay, so maybe that's one way to kind of um, help you and help the instructor also understand in terms of the rule for the in-text citation, okay? Um, oh, all right. Um, Michelle, Michelle is here. Um, Dr. Bondi, um, do you want to go ahead and um, make your video active, Dr. Bondi, for the for the webinar? Um, so, so give me a second, everyone. I'm um, uh, I sent the link to you, Dr. Bondi. So if you could click that link, your link is different from the students as a host. Right, Seely. Um, I think Seely can send you the link again, if that's okay, Seely. So we can have Dr. Bondi also as part of our. There you go. Okay. All right. So. Oh, that's funny. Okay, just a second. Yes, yes, yes. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. And we have another instructor here, uh, Dr. Bondi. We have Dr. Carly as well. Um, so she's helping us as well answer some of the students' questions. So thank you so much, Dr. Carly, for, for providing your answer. Sometimes, you know, with the PowerPoint and then all the questions, and we have about 57 participants. So thank you so much. Um, and we have Dr. Vondi here. And uh, all right. So we just finished this one in terms of the in-text citations, which we really had some good discussions about the use of the ampersand and the use of the conjunction and. So unless we have any other questions, I'll move on to the next slide and I'll have Dr. Vondi uh, explain the next slide. But do we have any questions about this slide about uh, another way to cite this source? Okay, if, if not, if, if one or two of you can just say no questions, moving on, okay, that way, all right, thank you, thank you, very good. Audience participation, okay? All right, 
Um, when you're ready, Dr. Vondi, um, this is another citation format if you would like to explain to the students. Well, I guess they could choose first. Um, I'm gonna put A or B, and then once they provide their answers, um, Dr. Vondi will, will answer these questions. So here, cite a source in the in-text. Um, you want to cite the source in the in-text, which is the correct APA formatting, okay? And then write your answers here, okay? What's interesting, Dr. Vondi, is uh, on slide six, we had a lot of students respond to the B, B as the answer for this mm -hmm. one. I just wanted to let you know. Um, so we clarify that one. Great. All right. So I hope that you can hear me. You can hear me all right. All right, yeah, wonderful. Let me say I apologize for being late. I didn't, I forgot that time changed in the United States. Our time, I'm in England and our time doesn't change until next Sunday. So I saw your email, we're starting now. And I thought, oh, they're starting now. And then all of a sudden it dawned on me why you were starting now. So I apologize for being late. I <laughs> no, no, no problem. And that's what I figured out. Yeah. So yeah. All right. Well, it looks like the majority, I think everybody said. Um, Except for Stephanie, she answered A and B. <laughs> A and B. Oh, yes. Well, to be honest with you, many of the uh, students and, that I deal with on a regular basis would choose A because I see it all of the time, but B is the correct answer. So you always want to keep the year of publication with the author. And so in this case, because you put the author at the beginning of the sentence uh, as part of your narrative, you want to put the year directly, you would want to put the year directly after Schifrin in parentheses, or if you're not going to refer to Schifrin directly in the text and you want to use an in-text citation at the end, then you would put Schifrin and the and the year together. Basically, the year and the author should always go together. Yes, yes, yes. So Stephanie, you can't have an A and B, but good try, <laughs> right? So only, so everybody else answered B, all right? Thank you, thank you. So let's move on to the next one. This one, it seems overwhelming, right? Um, so you want to quote a print source in the in-text, which is the correct formatting. So I'll have Dr. Bondi reply to you guys, but go ahead and give us your response to this one. Which one do you think is the correct answer for this one, A, B, or C? All right, so we have many of our students answered C, all right. Everyone's getting it correct, so I don't know why you guys are on the webinar. <laughs> so you obviously are not having the same trouble with APA that a lot of your colleagues have. Uh, so C is the correct answer, and the reason for that is because you're quoting the source, and when you quote the source, you have to provide the location identifier. And I don't know if someone else used that term first, but I certainly um, made it up recently. If, unless, you know, if I knew who I could give credit to for location identifier, I would. Maybe it's APA. Uh, but if you have page numbers, you definitely need to include the page numbers uh, of the quote that you're using. I'm curious, though, Daniel, you said I've been doing it wrong. Why, Daniel? How how would you format something like this? Would you would you follow A B C or other? I guess we should have put other, right? <laughs> yeah, or other. <laughs> and and another question, uh, Dr. Vondi, why is it PP and it's, it didn't sound right? Why is it double P instead of one P? Yeah, that's a good question, Alex. The reason is because the quote actually covers two pages. So it might be, it's probably at the bottom of the page and it continues on to the next page. And so you want to give credit to both pages. Yes, yeah, so this one, it would be a C, okay? All right, 
And then Daniel wants to know, is this necessary if pages are in the reference page? Yeah, absolutely. Whenever you quote a source in the text, you have to give the location identifier. So in this case, it's pages. Uh, and in another example, it'll be paragraph. In another example, it could be a section. So there's this uh, thing now that used to not be a problem for researchers back when it was only print. Now we have access to a lot of web resources and not only just web resources that are articles but we have access to something like module content or uh, articles that instead of using page uh, paragraph numbers which you know if you're scrolling down and you're at page paragraph 20 might feel a bit cumbersome if the article that you're reading online has a section header you can put the section header in instead so we don't have an example here uh, in the PowerPoint presentation, but you usually use paragraph numbers, but in some cases you might be able to use a section heading. You always refer to APA style blog and they're, you know, they're the rules people, if you're ever in doubt. All right, so very, very good. Um, another question, Alexis, before we move on to the next slide, why can't we number them? I'm not sure about that question, Alexis. Um, what do you mean by number them? Like, like number one, number two for the paragraphs? Or um, so if you could just clarify that question. Um, and another one is, does the abstract count as a paragraph? I okay. think this is, a, this Alex would be the case where you'd put in the parenthe uh, in parentheses abstract because then the person reading your paper knows immediately that the quote's found in the abstract and they don't have to wonder, they'll just go straight to the abstract if they want to follow up. But I guess the other question is, if the abstract is on page one, that's one paragraph, and then you have the introduction, um, and then the next page, do they count abstract as paragraph one? Let's say the quote came from the first paragraph of the introduction. Will they count paragraph one as the abstract or does paragraph one start right after the abstract? That's a good question. Um, I think probably what I would do in that case, if you're on an online only um, text, so a lot of the things that most of us access articles online for everything nowadays. But if you're, so if you're in an online in a print journal, <laughs> then you would follow that. You would see whatever page the print journal is. It'll show you in the, usually in one of the corners. If you're on an HTML site, what you want to do is make it as specific as possible without, com without being cumbersome. So the whole point of paragraph, page, section, headings, whatever, is to make it easy for your readers to find that quote if they want to find it. Because the expectation is that you are adding value, you're adding knowledge to the vast amount of information that there is. And when you get published, if it were published, for example, someone might see your article and want to give you credit, or they might use your article much like a Wikipedia article and look for more information for whatever they're researching. And so as the, as the author, you're saying, well, I found this quote, uh, in the abstract. So then the author can go, the researcher can go to that article and immediately go to the abstract and find the quote. So I think the point of this is instead of it, I think the point is that you want to be as specific as possible without being uh, cumbersome. So you would want something that takes the researcher as close as possible because even these, this example here on the slide, says pages 118 to 119. So if it just said page 118, uh, the, the researcher would find Hicks, open up the book, the article to page 118 and still have to scan for that quote because you haven't said, well, it's page 118, paragraph three. You've said it's on page 118. So the, the researcher would go to Hicks, page 118. Uh, so th it's the same thing if you use a section of an online article you're not going to say it's line seven, but you can say it's paragraph one, or you can say abstract. And that puts the researcher as close as possible to the material that you've used in your writing. 
Very good. Thank you. Thank you. So I hope that clarifies. Um, and, and I know uh, Alexis, I believe, asked a question about um, number using numbering, you know, one, two, three, and 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 Celia responded and said there are other uh, uh, writing standards that follow number one, two, and three, but not for APA. We don't say one, two, three. And last one before we move on to the next slide, um, and for everybody to see it, um, this is just something that I believe Katie posted. Um, she asks if this citation is correct. Um, if if the information, let's say, came from the abstract, um, so I let's say that's the sentence. Um, I would just remove that colon, and then if it's the abstract, then you would just put abstract and then a period at the end for the citation. Let's say this is your sentence, then that would be the correct way of citing your source. As long as this is an online article, HTML, and not a print source. So again, if in this case, Hicks is a print source. And so when you go to that, that um, journal article, it's set up like a journal article. And so it has page numbers on each page. But if you were on a um, an HTML article, then yes, abstract, definitely. Okay. All right. Okay. So I'll erase that slide later on, but good question, um, Katie. Katie, Katie. All right. Um, I think we have one or two more questions before we move on to the next one. From Daniel, if we add the page or paragraph locations in the citations, um, does the reference page cover all instances if the reference is used more than once? Yes. Okay. Okay. So yes, that's that's yeah. We're 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 doing the references section later on as well. But yes, um, it will cover the information in the references section. But yes, you you still need to put the page or paragraph number in the citation if there is a direct quote. Um, Risa, do you capitalize abstract or would it be lowercase like p and para? Um, you capitalize it. It's like it is like the um, using a title in the reference. In sorry, it's like using the title within the in-text citation when you don't have an author. You use title case, so to speak. So that would be every important word would be capitalized. So just like that, abstract. Very good, everyone. Thank you. Active participation. Wonderful. Moving on. Okay, block quotes. Um, I don't think a lot of students use 40 words or more in their papers, but if you do use 40 words or more, you have to format your paper just like this one. They're called block quotes. If I highlight this, and I usually highlight the number of words when I wanna know, when I want to know how many um, words are in a quote, okay? Um, and this one, when I did highlight, it's more than 40 words. So something like that, you, I usually want students to start with a sentence to kind of introduce that this 40 words um, quote is going to be included in the paper. So here, um, the, the sources, the authors are listed at the beginning, West Dean. Well, of course, um, this one here, it's going to be West, okay? And then um, it's going to be et al. Okay. Okay. And then we have the year. And if you can see, uh, the block quote is there. It's indented all the way from the first, second, third line, or however many lines that you have. Then you have the period at the end of that sentence. Um, and then you have the page or paragraph number. So I could have chosen the page if the page is there. And I've chosen the paragraph number because the page number is there as well okay all right do we have any questions and i you know i've seen um maybe a few uh quotations of more than 40 words but do we have questions about that or any additional input uh, uh dr carly or dr vande any additional uh, input on 40 words or more. But one more thing, one, one thing that I do ask students is that if they do have a lot of quotes, I just tell them, uh, do your best to paraphrase more um, so that you could demonstrate that you, you, you do understand uh, what you just read, okay? All right, no comma after at all. 
it comes um, after the it comes after well let's see it depends which is defined by with at all so i believe the comma comes after the year it definitely would not come before the year so yes usually in most cases when like if you said according to west at all 2021 you would most definitely have a comma because that's an introductory phrase uh, and i do believe the the standard is to put a comma after 2021. Um, so, well, yeah, I, I guess it's part of that sentence, but the et al sometimes, um, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll double check that one. Um, but this one, I believe, um, I, I think it depends on the sentence where we put the comma, but if they're inside the parentheses, okay, um, let, let's say the parentheses is like this, Wes et al. So the comma is here, kind of like when you have those three names, right? You put the comma um, before the year of publication and then you place it there. Um, so, and Celie could give us a link for the et al's as well, but we'll double check and come back to that one. Um, as cited by, okay. So if we have more time, we'll go go to the as cited by. That's one of the things that we talked about because there's just so many rules about about uh, APA that you have to follow for in-text citations. But I will write it down as cited by, uh, and we'll talk about that as well. Okay. All right, Michelle, did 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 you look on that? Uh, I I know for the inside when it's in the parentheses, you put et al period comma. 2021. And normally with this one, um, yeah, so we put it in there in the chat box. She put a link to the APA yes, into yes, citation yes. for the for the et al. Okay. All righty. Yeah, okay. and just just to just a note, I don't I um was reading the chat, so I wasn't completely listening to you, Teresa. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no problem. But uh, just to point out depends on your instructor but if you notice at the end of the um block format that the period of the quote comes before the in-text citation of the location identifier uh, and there is no punctuation after the in-text citation but that's only for block formatting so if this were not 40 words or more if it were 30 words then the period comes after the in-text citation um, and not before so that's just something to note. And everything is double spaced. So even when you, in some, in some writing styles, it's not, but in APA, all lines are double spaced. There are no extra spaces in between anything. It's all just double spaced. So here's an example from that link that Celie posted. Um, so you, let's say you have a narrative, just like this one here, defined by West or discussed by, by Stiglitz. So you do have uh, no comma on this one, um, but uh, just a period and then the year. But then if you have it in parentheses, inside the parentheses, then you have the comma inside to separate the authors from the year, okay? So uh, make sure that you guys uh, bookmark that link as well. All right, let's move on. Any questions? So. Um, very interesting discussion. We're already 140, uh, 1.45 my time, so we'll move on to this one. Um, quotes from a web-based article, which one is the correct APA formatting? Is it A or B? And then I'll have Dr. Bonde explain this one. Okay, so I yeah. think after our discussion, right? Yeah, exactly. I thought if you're paying attention to the previous discussion, then you would know that the correct answer is B. So location identifiers should always be included whenever you quote. You don't necessarily have to include a location identifier if you don't quote, but you definitely do if you do. Okay, <laughs> right. You definitely do if you do quote. <laughs> Here, right, based on our previous discussion, you do need to include the page or paragraph number because you have a direct quote. All right, very good. Okay, citation for an organization. Oh, and, yes. Uh, let me try. I, I think we do have the poll, which I want to use here. Let me launch it. 
Um, that way we could practice. Let's do for the first one. It's the same one as what you're seeing right now. Is it the same one? Okay, let's, uh, let's go to this one before we move on to slide 12. So we could use uh, um, the feature, this feature, the poll uh, quizzes. So which one is a correct uh, answer for number one? And just to know, this is the this is references. Oh, the references. I'm this sorry. Is the okay. references, but that's good. I think it's good that we do these both together because obviously, if you're going to have an in-text citation, you have to have a reference, and the in-text citations and the references have to match in information. Thank you, thank you. I was looking at the 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 source, the Pew Research Center, and then I also looked at uh, which we'll cover that later on, but. Um, so I guess since since I deployed the quizzes, we can also look at this one. All right, so we have two out of seven for the for the quizzes. If you guys could just do a quick response, but that's okay. We'll come back to that one um, because I think students are still answering. Um, two out of ten, um, eight of, out of ten for for the for the references. So I, I'll I'll come back to that one. Um, Michelle, all right. So let's go ahead and 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 look at slide 12 for this one, slide 12. Um, and, then, and then we'll go back to the poll to, to compare the answer also for the references. So what is the answer for slide 12 for the, for the citation? Because we're still in the citation. Are you asking me? <laughs> no, 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 I'm sorry, Michelle. Everyone. <laughs> Our I thought that's what everybody was answering. I wasn't sure because we did both at the same time. So I wasn't yes, sure I know, which one I know. were answering. I, I, looked at the, I looked at the source and I said, oh, it, it, uh, it's the same one that we did. I, that, that's the references. So, okay. So a lot of students answered A, Michelle, for the citation for the organization. Yeah, um, very good. So is our answer A as well? All right. Yeah. Okay, and I think we only had one or two for C, um, and one or two. All right. So this one, any questions? Why we have a uh, an A for the answer? All right, for the citation. Okay, and then now I'm going to show the poll. All right, because it matches the reference section, so we could kind of you know, open this up for the poll. So I want you guys to see, you can, you can see the poll, right, Michelle? Dr. Yeah, Ani? I can. Okay, all right. Now that you can see it, um, let's just look at the answers. I have, um, we only have two choices here and we have 29% um, said the answer for the references section. So let's say you, your, your citation is Pew Research Center um, and the correct answer is yes. Now how would you write this source in the references section using that source? And so 29% said A is the correct answer. 71% um, of our participants said B is the correct answer for this. So some of them said center, comma, PR. Um, majority did answer the complete organization's name. And the correct answer, Michelle, is for the poll. Dun, dun, dun. B. So you want to spell out the organization's name. The, the center comma PR would only be if Polly Reynolds Center was the author. Then, so if you've got an author, an individual, a person, then you use the last name, first and middle initial format. But if you've got an organization, you, you spell out the organization entirely. All right. And I've seen that a lot as well. So spell out the organization's name. Okay. All right, so that's good. Okay, moving on to the next one. So I'll, I'll move that down, okay? You can't see the poll. I, I moved it down. I moved the poll down, all the way down. Okay, no date. Uh, yeah, Lisa, what do you mean by no date? There's a date yeah. there in the, um, the reference. So yes, where, uh, what question, Risa, for the no date? on the last page. So the last page. So we in, the in, text, in the in-text citation, you only use the year. Only in the reference do you use more than a year if it's a periodical that has a month and day. But in the in-text citation, you only use the year. 
So for the poll, uh, Risa, the answer, uh, our answer is B for the poll. Oh, the answer, for the, yeah, for the poll, the answer is B. And for the slide on the in-text citations, it's A. Yes. OK. All right. Good questions. Good questions. All right. Moving on to the references. Yay. Yay. And then we'll have time for questions, hopefully. OK. Well, let me go here since we have the poll up here. OK. Let me go to number two. OK. Did you guys get a chance to answer number two? We do have A and B. We only have 12 students answer number two. So if some of you could still go back and answer the number, the number two question. So how, which one uh, is the correct way to list the references for the number two, disinformation and democracy? And we have someone raised his hand. Let me see if I can find that. Okay, so I'll copy that question from Brent. Okay, after this one, after number two, I have uh, some questions from Brent on the citation um, for the references. So this one, um, let's look at the answers. So we have 13 students respond to this one. Um, and so we're looking at the poll. Okay, we're looking at the poll and we only have two choices, Chelsea, A and B. So I'm looking at your answer. So correct me if I'm wrong, your answer is C, okay? Um, unless it's a different uh, question, okay? All right, so Michelle, um, the answer that we have here for the second question, um, almost a tie, almost, but, but mm. 50, percent answered B yes and then 44 percent answered A yes wow I love this question because so many students make the mistake <laughs> and it bears it out today the correct answer is A so you do not include the library databases in your references don't do it and there's a good reason why because the library database is specifically tied to the university for which only university staff have or students have access to. So in the real world, um, anyone seeing your reference would never be able to find Schifrin's article by using the ProQuest database from CSU Global. That link would not work for them because they're not associated with CSU Global. And that's so in, in API, APA formatting, uh, you just provide the full publication information. So a side note, because I saw it today, I was marking, I saw it today. Some students will give us Schifrin A, Disinformation and Democracy, the Internet Transformed Protest, but did not improve democracy, HTTPS, the ProQuest.com, et cetera, et cetera. And that's also wrong. You need to provide the full publication information to include the journal, the volume, the issue, and the page range. All right. So no yeah. library database, but yes for full publication information, which is the journal, and as much as is, is available, the volume, issue, and page range. Thank you. Can you guys see the poll? I know EI e, e. E. Jones said you can't. Um, you cannot see it. Stephanie said no. Okay. So. What I see is that it is, you have to scroll. That's what I see. So the poll opens, there's a window and it, I had to scroll down to see the second question. Okay, all right. Can you guys scroll down? It disappeared. I wonder if I end and then launch it again. Nope, it, it might disappear. But see if you guys can look at the, um, maybe there is a link that says poll, if you guys could click that. Uh, I see. So the, the once students answered the first question, the poll disappeared. Okay. Um, Stephanie problem. said, "Go to the menu on the bottom." Okay. Anne said, um, "There's an icon." Doctor Anne said, "There's an icon called called poll at the bottom." So see if you guys can see it. Okay. All right. Now we're moving on to three. Okay. So which right. is can the we correct? Just, can I interject for just a minute, Teresa? Okay, sure. So Brent asked a question and I was trying to respond to him in the chat and 
Um, as you can tell from my picture in the chat, I have my husband's photograph and I'm sitting at his computer using his mouse. And so nothing is working for me <laughs> because everything is foreign and I'm in England with the time difference. So um, to answer Brent's question about no date, A, B, C, et cetera, it is with the hyphen. So I was going to, I was going to put it in the chat, N period, D period, hyphen, A, it's the correct formatting, but it came out some weird gobbledygook of letters that didn't make any sense. So I thought I would interject now and just simply tell you that's the way you do it whenever you've got no date. And I appreciate you being bringing up the question because I had to look it up and I incorrectly told somebody the other day what the format was. So now I know in the future that the hyphen is there before the A and the B when you have no date. When you don't have no date, it's just A and B. And that's when you have sources that you have the same source for multiple articles that you're using in your text in case someone's not following what I'm talking about. Okay, thank you, thank you. Um, well, I move the third question for the poll and I copied it. And this is the screenshot of that um, because a lot of you have said, um, you cannot see the poll. So here is the third question, okay? And for the third question, um, so let me just uh, hold on. Okay, so this is for the third question. Um, okay, so which one is the correct formatting? Um, we have the complete information on the very top. It, I guess it didn't copy for me the entire thing. Um, let me copy it again before I move it to the next one for everybody to see. Okay, because I know some of you said you cannot see it. Um, okay, and then I'll move it here so you guys can see. Okay. Okay, so now you should be able to see. Um, okay, and I'll just make that bigger. Okay, so here. The question, okay, we have um, we have three answers and, oh, okay, I shouldn't have copied the one on the top, Michelle, but, but we see the answers here for number three. We have 67% for A, 27 for B, and 7% uh, for C. Which one is the correct answer? Dun, dun, dun. The correct answer is B. All right, B is the Actually, correct answer. I have to say, yes. I, I have a, okay, so the correct answer is B with a, that the, this is a book and the book should be italicized. So in the formatting, the formatting got messed up. So first, first thing, the reason why it's B minus the problem with the italics is that only the first word, proper nouns, and the first word after a colon are capitalized. All other words in, a, in an article or book title are in lower case. That's called sentence case. And so never use all caps, please stop. <laughs> never use all caps in your uh, references for the author or for the title or for anything else um, most of the time. Uh, but also italicize your book titles. Okay, all right, yes. I see that a lot as well. Um, oh, there you go. I was able to share everything. I didn't know I could do that. Um, but yeah, so here's the answer for number three. The answer is B for everyone. We're almost out of time, but um, I'll just move on to the next one. And then Ooh. this is really quick. So let me remove the, the poll here. Um, yeah, just look quickly at, uh, the, at the PowerPoint and tell us which one in the chat box, which one is the correct formatting. All right, for this one here, can you guys see it? Okay, A, B, or C. So this is slide 16. All right, A for Stephanie, what about the rest? We're almost there, just give us maybe one or two more minutes. We're almost done with our slide. Okay, so we have a B, we have an A. 
All right. Um, so this one, Michelle? Yeah, it's A. And the reason why it's A is that APA discourages the use of author first names to reduce the potential for gender bias. That's the reason for it. A lot of times people won't tell you why, but that's the reason for it. So in your text, when you're writing your paper, you don't refer to an author by his or her first name. You just refer to them by their last name. And in the references, you put the last name first with a comma and the author's initials. So if they've got a middle initial, you would include the middle initial, but either way, it's always going to be R rather than Robert. Yes, okay. All right, very good, everyone. The second one, um, this is almost done, but this would be a good practice for, for many of you. Which one here is the correct answer? So, so this one B, all right. Okay. And, and you also probably receive feedback on the use of the DOI, right? So Michelle, for this one. The correct answer is C. Okay. Take a look at B and take a look at C. Oh, sorry. No, stop, rewind. I'm sorry. The correct answer is A. I wasn't even paying attention. Goodness me. Sorry. The correct answer is A, A, A. The correct answer yes, is A. Yes, yes. And I'll tell so, you why, since I've already okay. been making a mistake here. Um, so just because, okay, so the, the correct answer is A. You do not include the word volume. You don't include the word issue. And you don't include the word page or pages in your references. You don't do it. And then now, I so looked at C yeah. and made a mistake because I saw that there was no volume and there was no word pages. And I was like, oh yeah, it's C. But the problem with C is that after the page number, you have the parentheses for the year. And so what happens is journals do not always follow I don't even know why it is, but journals are under no obligation in their, in their running heads or whatever to follow a style guide. They've got their own thing going on. So you have to actually know APA to be able to know whether or not what they've got there is correct. And what you see at the very top, it says the original citation from the site is here. And that's how it's shown on the page that you would see if you were looking at this journal article, wondering how you're supposed to cite it. And they, for some reason, have put the year in parentheses at the end. So don't do that. Do it, follow, follow A, author first, then the year, then the title, and then the journal and all of the information with the journal without all the extra words. Yes. <laughs> That's a very sophisticated way of explaining it. Yes, and we don't need to include the 2016. Last yes. one, and then we'll say good. And it should be double spaced, you're correct. Double space, yes, yes, double space. So you have to format your papers to double space. Uh, and so this one, Teresa, is the one that we had the poll, and this one is correctly formatted with the italics. Okay, all righty. So yeah. here, um, uh, we already, uh, we, we know we, we said on this one, it's that B, B was right? correct answer. That B is the answer for that one. Okay. All right. So we have completed our presentation and thank you all for attending. Um, these are some resources that in addition to what Sealy provided to you for APA. Dr. Vondi, anything else you'd like to add about the resources? Yeah. So what I did was sometimes um, I go to APA because they are the, the rule makers. Um, and that's only if the very detailed specific information that I'm looking for related to APA citations is not available on the Writing Center website. But I would always encourage students to go to the Writing Center website first because there's loads of really good information on there and it's getting better uh, month on month, year on year. So please do reach out to us if you have any questions. Seely is welcome, to, is, is happy to direct you to the right resources to help you. And as Seely mentioned, we do have uh, the Writing Center where you could book an appointment 
with a consultant, uh, a live appointment or a Dropbox appointment where you get your papers reviewed and then it will be returned to you within 36 hours. Thank you all for those of you who are here. If you would like to see additional topics in the future, please write them here in the chat area. Uh, thank you, Celie. Thank you, Dr. Vondi, for joining us. Dr. Carla, for, for, for answering the students' questions. Thank you all for being here. Yeah, and real quick before we go, I just wanted to mention to everyone, um, I said it in the chat a few times, but uh, the recording for this, I'm going to post the link as soon as it's ready sometime this afternoon on the Student Life page, the Student Life LinkedIn page. Um, I will also submit the recording to marketing and in a few days or a week, it should be on the CSU Global YouTube page. Um, I included the link to the Writing Center website. I want to say there's a search function. So if you're ever looking for specific help about a particular topic, use that search function or if you just need help finding resources or if you have, you know, a, a short question, uh, you can email the Writing Center at writing.center at csuglobal.edu. Um, you know, every now and then a student will email us like, can you look at my entire paper? No, but, um, <laughs> but uh, you know, if you have like a one-off question or something, you can email us or if you need help finding resources. Um, we, I don't know if we can email the PowerPoint to everybody because we'd have to get everyone's emails and figure that out. So, but we will post the recording. And as I mentioned, if you need more resources, the Writing Center website is there for you. You can email us um, as well or book a writing consultation. So we have lots of great options for, for you, all of you. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone. Yeah, thanks, until, everyone. until next time. Bye-bye. Bye.